Hello everyone. So this is part two of the continuing saga with the uh, Nito D7 uh, vacuum uh, LiDAR problem. As you saw in the first video, the LiDAR was not spinning. Um, so when I opened it, I found that the ribbon cable was uh, frayed, as you can see here. Um, I bought another one and replaced it, and of course, unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, but I got thinking that, uh, well, I got thinking. I did some research as well online, on YouTube, and I was getting uh, an error that said um, something wasn't working, push the button to reset. 3000 so it didn't say error code 3000 it gave me some error about pushing the button and then a number 3000 at the end if you search for that it seems like the most common issue is the motor right here so um i said okay how am i going to troubleshoot that well what i did is if you take this off i, I unfortunately i already put it all back together uh after testing it and um, so I'm doing this to hopefully help somebody else. But uh, basically, if you take this off and you follow this little red and black cable that comes off the motor, you see that it goes on to a connector in the back. And on the PCB, there are leads that are long enough uh, that allow you to clip on uh, little clip leads, okay? So I measured the voltage on those pins. I expected that to be in the 24 volt range, uh, 12 volt range rather, I measured the voltage on the leads and when I turned this on, it was getting about 14 volts. Now 14 volts, uh, I suspect that is a uh, open load, so it probably 12 volts is what the motor is uh, powered by. Um, as soon as the, uh, uh, the vacuum aired out, uh, turning off the vacuum, uh, which means it would have shut off the, uh, the LiDAR, then the voltage went away. So that said to me, that told me that everything was working, voltage is provided on those pins at the right time, but the motor isn't working, the motor isn't responding, so the motor had to be dead. Uh, I guess another thing I could have done, uh, I didn't do this, but I, another thing I could have done is unplug the motor, put my uh, voltmeter on the leads of the motor itself, and then spin the motor to see if it's producing a voltage on the other end. So I didn't do that, but that is another way to troubleshoot, especially a little motor like this. So uh, a little more research online, and yes, these uh, D7 motors are readily available, but they're 25 bucks. I mean, it's ridiculous that something like that, that I know for a fact it costs $2.00. Um, it's uh, it, you know it goes for that much. Same with the cable, by the way. You know you can buy these for for fifteen bucks, uh, but you can buy them off of eBay from China for three dollars. So um, uh, so again, long story short, that's the part that needs to be replaced. The uh, you basically take off these uh, screws right here. I haven't put this one back in yet. That one I haven't put that one those two back in yet. But you take that off, uh, those screws off, and this whole thing comes out. You take these screws off so that you can you can have access to the belt and, and move that out of the way. And you flip it over after unplugging this cable and that cable. Otherwise, it just there's no room for this to go. Uh, take those two cables off. You just pry them very gently from the sides over there on, on each side of that connector. And then you flip this over. You unplug the power cable to the um, that powers the motor itself. And then three little screws right there one two and three and the motor just slides back and out in through that hole to put the new one in you basically uh you have to replace the uh, pulley off the old one so what i did is i just took some needle nose uh small needle nose pliers put them underneath and very gently pried up and the thing came up no problem uh so put it all back together and it works now you can uh back to the motor replacement i actually ended up not buying this motor uh, because this is a similar motor to a good old-fashioned CD player. So it just so happened, uh, happens that I happen to have an old uh, uh, desktop PC that had a, a CD player. So I took that apart and looked at the motor and it was exactly the same size. The numbers didn't match, but there was really no numbers on the old motor to speak of. So I figured, well, I figured, I know for a fact that motor had to be 12 volts because it's in a, it's in a, a CD player that goes into a PC, which is powered by 12 volts. Um, and I figured, hey, what the heck, I'll take a chance. So I put, I put it in, everything size-wise, everything fits, it's exactly the same. Um, and again, it works. Now, the one thing to note is the LiDAR has to spin counterclockwise. 
So if you look at this top down like this, the LiDAR has to spin counterclockwise, okay? So uh, you have to make sure that you wire the motor correctly because obviously the motor has a different connector originally uh, that, that the one that's in here, that was in here. Uh, and in fact, it turns out that you have to reverse the polarity. So black goes to red and red goes to black. Uh, so before I put it in, I actually set it up uh, on the bench with the clip leads and powered it on red to red, black to black. And in fact, it was spinning clockwise. So obviously the thing to do is just reverse the polarity. It's just a DC motor and off you go. So um, you can do some research online and very easily can find some model numbers um, that uh, will provide something that is equivalent. As long as you roughly make sure that it's the right size, it's gotta work because uh, the electronics actually adjust the speed of the motor. Um, so, uh, you know, so that's not a problem. At the end of the day, it's a 12 volt motor. Uh, so honestly, I think this is the design flaw of these things. Uh, again, there seems to be a lot of people out there that have the same problem with the lighter not spinning and it turns out to be the motor. In fact, even the people that sell these motors will tell you if it's an Aero 3000 for a D7 uh, or even other needle vacuums, uh, they have a slightly different motor size. Uh, that's the, the, the thing to do. So if the thing doesn't move, and the lighter is not spinning, they tell you that is very likely the cause, which turned out to be the case in this case. Uh, again, the fact that the cable was frayed, initially I thought it was just, you know, from, from friction or whatever, vibrations maybe, but maybe uh, the motor overheated and it actually blew the line. Um, so that's, uh, that's also possible. Anyways, um, I did test it like this and it worked. Now I'm putting it back together and I'll be back in a second once it's all assembled to show you that it actually works. So this is the motor that came out of the, the bad motor that came out of the vacuum, okay, and here is the donor, good old fashioned 24X CD player. So I used the motor that was located in this area which actuates the, uh, the tray. There's another one in the back here that uh, moves the laser back and forth. That seems to be the same size, it just that had much shorter leads. So I just picked that one just because I had longer leads. But basically I cut the leads at a certain length and then cut them off the old motor and spliced the two together, again reversing the polarity. All right, so the printer is back in its dock. I'm going to have it do the living, uh, the family room, which means uh, use zones with no-go lines and so on. Comes out. And off it goes. That way. Good girl. Alright, so it's working. I'm gonna have it go home. All right, and it even knows where home is. So that was a problem, bad motor, good luck.